And then I have my airplane noise. Okay, you can hear that. And then I have the dryer timer. Because the timer like twitches in there. Okay. All right, and then this is the washer clothes. This sounds slightly a little bit different. Okay, you can hear some ring in there. So I'm kind of playing around with these now. This is what I've done so far. Uh, I opened this up. And what I did is basically I loaded one sample in here. The only thing I loaded right now is a dryer closed. So I loaded the sample in. I just drag and dropped it. And now once I drag and drop it, uh, you can click on uh, regions. You can click on waves. You should be able to see the waves. And once you see the waves, then you can go to what's called splice beat and then splice sample into even parts. You can use this if you want to, uh, or you can splice it over here, beat transient and splice. I'll just start off with doing splice into even parts, and then you can take these and adjust them. Uh, like I've got that here. Okay. Okay. Now, some of these, you know, of course, they won't line up perfectly rhythmically, but if you move them around, shift them around to different 16th notes or 32nd notes, whatever beat they fall on, then they should line up the way you want them to line up. All right. So once you have basically dragged it, all you do is wait till you see two arrows. You can drag it that side, drag the other side. Get your clip where you need to do. If you need to zoom in, you can zoom in on it. If you need to zoom out, you can zoom out on it. Now, there's a whole bunch of things in here. You can save this so that way you can open it up later on. Like, say you want to save these samples and then you want to open it up another time. You can go ahead and save it. There's a bunch of other things on here that you can do. And I don't want to get into all of that, to be honest. But um, so once you have it basically cut the way you want it or spliced the way you want it, all right, then you can right click and then you can go to splice layout splices or delete all splices or splices to waves or remove overlap uh, layout splices is what you want to do and then once you do that it's going to add those to the keys all right now you can use this with your keyboard controller or you can use a piano roll or you can use a step sequencer whatever way you want to go about or you can use a virtual controller which is including cakewalk once it adds it to these keys now you're not limited right here. Now you can zoom in so you can see them better. You can move these keys around. Uh, so if I want to drag this one over there, I can drag it over there. If I wanted this note to cover more than one key, I can stretch it out. Uh, stretching it out just means that all the notes that I stretch it out to are gonna play the same note. Now, if I want to tune this note, say if you want to tune the beat or tune the sample, what you want to do is at least what what's works for me. I don't know if this is correct, but it works for me. Uh, I'll drag this down a little bit. So say this is C4. Okay. All right. If I wanted to tune that one down, I want to go to what's called the root note. So I'm going to set the root note as C4. You can adjust the root and you'll see it go up the keyboard. So if I set it to C4, now if I stress this note out, Okay, you can notice it's going going up and down. Or if I want to go out even more. Okay. But for now, I'm not really worried about the root note because I don't need the root note. So I should be able to delete this, I think. Yeah. Okay, so I deleted it and now. Okay, and it's just back there. Once you have all of these up there and you know what notes you want them on, you have them the way you want. I'm not even really worried about trying to get them adjusted, sounding good here. I mean, you can go down here to the sampler part and you can do some adjustment down here, uh, like X fade, um, you know, the release or whatever you need to do. I'm not worried about all that here. I'm just mainly using this just to get the sound split up the way I want them or spliced the way that I want them. And then once I have them there, I can go into, um, I've got the step sequencer pulled up right now. And I just recorded a snare drum part. So, or I just programmed a snare drum part. 
So this is my snare drum part. Okay, so this actually comes in, it has like a transient that comes in before the actual downbeat. Okay, so that little preceding, okay. I made it kind of like a reverse note basically. So instead of putting it on beat one, I put it on the 16th note before. So that means when it falls on beat one, I adjusted the time a little bit so the way it fits a little bit more and I used the whole duration because if you lower the duration of it, then you only will use, uh, it'll like basically cut the decay of the note. So in this case, it's still not giving me the whole decay, but uh, if I made it shorter, let's solo this track, okay? And you can see how short it is. Yeah, and if I take it all the way up. Okay, so you actually hear the note. And if I take it all the way down, you hear nothing. So you wanna play with that duration to get it the way you want. If you want the whole transient, the whole entire note, you can always like fade it in and fade it out wherever you want it, or you can, you know, adjust it, whatever you want to do later on. So once I have it inputted here, all right, I did eight beats. Uh, then I exit out of that. And then what you can do is you can freeze the track. And I think I did that. Did I do that down here? Bass, yeah, okay, so here's the snare drum part right here. I freezed it, you can just press freeze, all right? And then you can take that, press control, and then you can drag, drop it down below, and now you created an audio track of it. That way, you don't mess with the main track, you just create an audio track, so that way you just deal with audio. Then I can go in there and adjust this track by itself. I don't really need that track though, but. Uh, so let me mute these so you can hear what I got sound. So now my bass drum, this is what bass drum sound is like. Okay, this is what it sounded like originally. Uh oh. If I turn off the effects, I've also got um, EQ, we've got two EQs on it. That's what it sounded like originally. Okay, once again, this is like me shutting the door on the dryer, I think. Yeah, just a dryer. So, um, turn these back on. Yeah, I do have a gate on my microphone right now, so if you hear it kind of come in and out, I uh, know that 